Hey folks, it's Amy from Colorado Mountain Living. Today we are going to look in the hive and do a hive inspection. This is where you look for mites. It's called a sugar shake. I'm going to show you how to collect a specimen of bees and examine them for mites and count them to know if you need to treat your hive. This is the new hive that I installed last week with the new, with the five frames of brood and bees and honey. And I'm also gonna get, I haven't looked in the hive yet since last weekend. So we'll get a chance to see how well they're doing and also see if they need to be treated for mites because it's good to get a handle on that early. My preferred meat treatment for mites is oxalic acid. Now the fact that they're already laying eggs and brood if you start an oxalic acid treatment, it doesn't treat the eggs or the brood. So you're gonna to have to keep up with that treatment for three weeks. So other methods can penetrate those cells and get the eggs and the brood. But right now, um, I'm just gonna focus on oxalic acid because it's really effective and I might have to treat them for three weeks if we decide that they need to be treated. So first thing I'm gonna do is get the cover off and the feeder. The feeder is where I filled that up with sugar syrup yesterday and I'm gonna move it over here so I can start getting into the hive and checking things out. So I'm gonna suit up because I'm gonna be in the hive for a while. It might be annoying to them, especially if I'm scooping them up with a, with a half cup measuring cup. <laughs> I don't want them get, a lot of times they like to dive bomb your face and say, hey, what are you doing in my house? So it always feels more comfortable to be in the suit. And actually, I think what I'm gonna to do to make this easier is move my feeder onto this hive because it's nice and level. And that way I can um, have a flat spot to put everything and stay organized. So hopefully, I'm just going to smoke the entrance a little bit and the inside cover. Hopefully I've got enough grass in here to burn. Smoking definitely lets them know that you're there. And then it kind of distracts them from defending the hive to like start taking care of uh, of their honey so move the cover over inner cover oh, wow. so there's bees in the already. feeder you can see them on this <coughs> side of the screen I recommend using the hive top feeder for new when you're trying to establish a new hive because it holds a lot of food and it's completely enclosed and no other bees can, can get it Sometimes the bees have already sort of secured this with their propolis, so it can be kind of sticky to take off. It's going to be awkward enough to move anyway. I'm going to get my smoker going again so I can make sure there's enough smoke. When I lift off this cover, the bees are going to be right there, so... Of course, the wind isn't helping, but just enough to kind of let them know that I'm around. Okay. This is really awkward to lift. Let's see. Oh, wow. This has got the fluid in it. All right, so those bees will just chill out. Wow, they're already building some wax, attaching it to the bottom of the of the feeder there. There's not much smoke in here, but that's gonna be enough to, I hope, to keep them occupied. Plus, you know what I'm gonna do actually is take out an empty frame so I can have some room to work with. I haven't really worked all this area, so. That gives me a lot more room to push things out of the way. It's always good to like take a, hot, take a frame out so you have some room to work with. So, Looks like they're starting to build out the wax. Oh, they are so busy. Look See? At that. Oh my goodness. So the yellow down here is the honey, the bees wet plastic coated frames. And then they're starting to make it more three dimensional. So they're using all that feed to um, build out into three dimensions. There's some glistening in there. So they're filling it with sugar water, turning that into honey. It's not the kind of honey that you are proud to eat because it's just sugar water and not from the flowers really, but um, when the flowers enough, come out. Yeah, the flowers should be coming out pretty soon, so so I might try to take my sample off. Let's see. Let's see if I can do it with these bees. I'm gonna hang these guys on the side. This is a just a little hanger. 
can help you put things down without having to put them on the ground. This is always the tricky part, trying to get your sample. <laughs> Although these don't seem to mind when you're moving them around, but what we need to do is get a half a cup of bees, which is kind of awkward, and then I'm going to put them in this jar with a screen lid, and then put about a tablespoon or so of powdered sugar in, and kind of shake them up. It's a little bit rude, but that's the best way to dislodge mites if they're on your bees. There's a spider right here. <laughs> the easiest way to get bees off is to shake them into a container and then scoop them up. But maybe I can do it on this top lid. Because it's kind of hard to scrape them against the frame. Yeah, is that weird? Yeah, it's a little bit weird. So they're going. Wait a minute. Shook off a bunch, a bunch of bees. It's about a fourth of a cup. It kind of, it kind of is a little, un, a little bit annoying for the bees. Tossed around. So the next thing is to put in the powdered sugar. Okay. First thing I want to do is make sure no more bees go into this feeder. I don't want them to drown, so I'm going to cover that up. Okay. Powdered sugar. And I don't want to step on any bees because they're all over the ground. So the one thing I forgot was to bring a Tupperware container to shake the bees into. Yeah. I mean, that worked, but usually I use something a little bit more round. Okay. This is definitely the thing that can aggravate your bees. Is pouring sugar on them and then, okay, get the screen on, the sugar on, and now you just kind of roll them and coat them. Okay. It's just, it's like, it's gotta be terrible, but at least it's sugar. And then you just kind of let them hang out for a minute. And then they're, right now they're cleaning themselves and they're all covered in sugar. And as they kind of get all the sugar off them, it brushes off the mites. So that way um, in about five minutes or so, I'm gonna shake them onto this saucer and then dissolve the sugar and then um, count the mites. And I'll show you how tiny the mites are if we have some. They're very hard to see. They're like a, the smallest tick. Should have brought a spoon, but oh well. So I'm just kind of shake for a few minutes to try to get the blue sugar out. There's much coming out here. Two mites so far. Three or four. One, two, three. So that's not quite the threshold. Um, last time I think I had nine or ten mites and I treated, but I think less than what, nine per 300. I forgot what, what percentage that is. If you had ten per 300, that's three percent. So if you're at 3% or more than you would want to treat them. But right now they're okay. I can't tell if that's one. Isn't there? Mm. Um, but I probably should check again in a few weeks, right? Just to keep on top of it. But right now they don't really need it, which is good. What would be the harm in treating now? Um, I think they can always get uh, build up with a resistance to them. Oh, okay. Build up a resistance to any treatment. So if you're frequently treating them with the same oh, okay. thing. So, I, don't know. Yeah, I think just keeping up with it, you know, definitely like okay. in a month I'll check again. After all these bees hatch out, I'll check again and see what their status is. <laughs> Come on. Come on. This is no, you're not my person. Yeah. It's it's awesome. White bees. I know. So they're oh. a little annoyed. I'm going to put the lid on quick because I feel like this would be the time of the session where they're going to be more apt to but he's zapping me. 
You're gonna squish them. I know, I'm gonna try to... Just be quick about it. And then, cover. So bad. So I think that's pretty good news for the for the newbies is to um, is to that they are they don't have an overloaded mite count right now. So that's yeah. really good. And um, I'm just going to keep up with it because mites is probably the number one thing besides wildlife that will determine the health of your hive and weaken your hive the fastest. So you, hmm. it's almost it's not really optional as a beekeeper to kind of not really check for mites because I think. When I think back to maybe how my mites were, how my bees were doing in North Carolina, I probably could have done a better job with mite treatment and just monitoring and counting. So I'd learned, you can see the video online, but um, I actually had the state, one of the state beekeeping folks come to my house and he helped me, guide me through a, high, a sugar shake. So okay. um, it's, at least in North Carolina, um, you don't have to pay for that service, they'll just come and help you out so oh. I think it's just like one of the regional state state beekeepers so good okay good well, I'm really happy with that I'm They've glad calm down quite a bit yeah yeah I know it's definitely quiet once you kind of put their house back together I think they do better so I'm just was happy with um you know the way that the mite count turned out it was not very high so not necessarily treatable right now um, I'll keep an eye on it in a few weeks after they hatch out more bees. Oh I'll, I'll check again and make sure that um, we're staying on top of the mites and where they're not getting out of control. So a lot of times the mites grow inside of the cells. So they grow on the drones. They'll grow on the larva. And you you could peel open one of them and see a mite sucking on unborn bee. You know, oh, it's, wow. It's very nasty. So it's good to... And the beekeeper I got them from said, you know, you're probably going to spread mites up there if you don't keep track of, you know, yeah. treat for them. So you don't want to get the native populations infected with mites. Right. So. Thanks guys for tuning in. Hopefully you learned a little something about how to take care of your bees and check for mites. It's fairly simple, not too hard, and I'm very pleased that they aren't in trouble yet, but I'm going to be responsible and continue to monitor. So stay tuned and keep up with our beekeeping channel if you'd like to stay informed.